at risk, low, lazy, unmotivated, not smart, apartment kids, Title I kids. We already know where he will end up after high school. Her parents don't care about her. Education is not part of their culture. If they don't address it at home, there's nothing we can do. They don't want to succeed. He's just mimicking the problem behaviors he sees at home. This school is not a good fit for him. If you have ever worked in a school, you have likely heard some of these coded labels or phrases. Perhaps you've even said them yourself. While often stated by well-intentioned and unassuming educators, these phrases sum up deficit thinking. Deficit thinking has become a wildly popular term in education. But what does it mean? And what does it look like in schools? We asked educators to define it for us, and we came to the following shared definition. Deficit thinking is a distorted lens focused on student weaknesses that blame students and their families for student difficulties rather than acknowledging the impact of our practices and broader structural inequities. Let's break that down. 1. A distorted lens. Biases about student abilities color our worldview and warp our reality. They may be based on our upbringing, stereotypes we've encountered over time, or harmful generalizations we believe. This is the power of deficit thinking. The longer we operate from this distorted lens, the more data we find that confirms false beliefs, and the more we will fail our students. 2. Focused on student weaknesses. This emphasis on student weakness is especially present when working with minority groups and students from marginalized backgrounds. It's based in racism, classism, sexism, ableism, and eugenics. 